Our next guest knows a thing or two about hard economic times. Margaret Hoover's grandfather was Herbert Hoover, the president who presided over the Great Depression. Margaret has worked on two presidential campaigns. She's with us this morning to discuss the debt talks and the hard line taken by some conservatives and Tea Party members in this debt negotiation. She's written a great new book called American Individualism, a new generation, how a new generation of conservatives can save the Republican Party. We are also joined this morning by Democratic strategist Kiki McLean, good friend of this show. She is in Washington. Kiki, I'm going to start with you. This is a no-spin zone. Can we say that, or is that a different yeah, network? No, no. Uh, oh, don't say that one. No, no that's political. Somebody. No political spin here. No, no bumper yeah. stickers. No partisan yeah. talk. We know you're great at this. How does this end? Uh, I can't tell you right now because it's a moving target. Here's what's really fascinating to me about this, Allie. And you guys are right about the political nature of this crisis. Because every time, in this case, and I, I come at this from somebody who's been a, a real supporter of having a bipartisan solution mm -hmm. on this. I think you know that's my, my bet in my politics. But, I, but every time uh, Republicans, and particularly the Speaker or Mr. Cantor, his number two, have said there's something they wanted, the President has agreed to that, then they get up and they walk away from the table. So we want significant cuts in spending. Great. The president says, I'm, I'm there. I'm for, the, I'm for over four at the number. Okay, well, wait, wait, wait. We want the president at the table. Great. The president comes to the table. That's not enough. They get up and walk away. And it continues and continues and continues. And here's why. Because ultimately, the far-right extremists are controlling that caucus. And these guys in the Republican caucus right now are all about their own political survival. And that's why they won't agree Let's to put everything on the table, includes, including those revenue increases. Margaret, th there is definitely something to be said for, for Kiki's point that, uh, that there are, there are hardline conservatives who have come in here who are definitely taking a line that says, we're not compromising. There will be no tax increases or revenue increases or cutting of tax loopholes or credits. That's not part of the deal. I, I think there certainly are those people yeah. in the House Republican Congress uh, caucus. I think that they are not the people that are at the leadership table. Absolutely. And I think I think those people are people that uh, Chairman uh, that Rep. Boehner and Cantor are having to deal with. And and the message to them is, look. We're at a point now where compromise doesn't mean compromising your principles. Mm -hmm. We've gotten to this point, and we've gotten to this point because 87 freshmen were elected to the House of Representatives. They put new urgency on, on reforming debt and deficits in the right. fiscal future of the country, and this is not a loss. We're so not going to lose. You've got those but, 87 freshmen, many of whom came in on the, on the, on the winds of the, Repo of the Tea Party. Absolutely. You have 230, I think, who have signed uh, the, the Grover Norquist pledge, the American for Tax Reform pledge that they will not increase tax reform. Bottom line is... How do you? How does the math get you a compromise with people who won't won't compromise at all on taxes? Well, look, I mean, there's Boehner had eight hundred thousand to eight hundred million billion on the table, yep. and that was closing loopholes. I mean, ethanol, wind right. tax credits. These, I mean, and this is a concession for mm -hmm. many of these Tea Party folks, right. but they are willing to make it. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, Kiki, I appreciate your uh, characterization that that the Democrat, the Republicans keep moving the goalposts, and I think the Republicans would say that's that's exactly what's happening on their end as well. At the end of the day. We've got eight days. As, as we both know, we have eight days to, to probably pass. What we're going to pass is do is a short-term uh, debt ceiling rate, uh, raise, with but probably I with some spending cuts, because that's probably the only thing that's going to get us over the line, because nobody is willing to oh, have good. the yeah, debt yeah, here's the, the, here's, the here's the, We can talk here's about the this problem. again uh, in a few months. But Ali, but Ali, we don't really have eight days, and you know that, because yeah. the Asian markets have already started to react to us mm -hmm. this morning as we speak. It's clear that any legislation has to be posted this afternoon in order to make that deadline. But here's the real rub of the matter. And people ought to pick up their phones and they ought to call their members of Congress yep. today. And that is this. There is a chance to make big change for this country, long-term change, not just to get somebody through the next six months or their primaries next fall. The president put on the table a plan. Democrats are there in the Senate to say, let's cut spending, let's do the right fairness, thing on revenue, fairness, and let's raise this debt ceiling and get it done. The president is having some problems with Democrats on sure. the, when you talk about that big deal, which, the and frankly, you're right, we don't have eight days, we probably have 48 hours. The president took some heat in his own party because he said there is some place on entitlement reform that I will go. He didn't I, make it an all-or-nothing deal, and he was willing to go there in a big package that was on the table 
all last week, but today is the day. Kiki, I today appreciate that. Today is the that. day that we can make it happen. Kiki, I appreciate that, but the reality is we all know actually there has been no plan from the President of the United States. There has been frameworks, there have been speeches, but there and has Margaret, been no, the and only that, plan in that framework, the House of Representatives, yeah. and the only bill that has been passed has been in the House of Representatives. And so, and I, you know, it's hard to work is, with the White House when you yeah. don't have something in writing from them. Margaret, the reality is the President's been public, that he would stand up for that bigger program, their bigger uh, process of cutting spending, including entitlement reform. He's been very public on that. And, and Republicans just chose not and to take him up on that. Admit, Margaret, you gotta, you, th there's got to be some tax hikes. Come on. Even reasonable we can conservatives. Close, we can close loopholes. We can do, uh, there's okay, a lot of things we can do. That, that's there's a lot of things reform. we can do. I'm, yes, tax reform. Absolutely but you understand we're favor that some people, reform. including Grover Norquist and his group, say that closing loopholes and those credits are not, they're tax hikes. I, I think they're, they're will, we're all willing to make some compromises all right, right now. Well, good. If, you, if you two were hammering it out, we would have a deal. Margaret Hoover and Kiki McLean, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Margaret's book uh, is great. It's How a New Generation, American Individualism, How a New Generation of Conservatives Can Save the Republican Party.